In July of 2011, one of my patients who had been in my practice for 14 years, uh, at that time she was 62 years old and she had had psoriasis, a very aggressive form of psoriasis for about 42 years. It had started when she was 20 and through that time frame, she never had a single day that she didn't have lesions scattered over her body at a moderate to severe level of profusion, very dense on her skin. She walked into my clinic and she was really covered from shoulders to her toes, everything but her face, with a violaceous red scaly rash. And she looked at me and she said, Doc, I'm done. I itch, I hurt. I ache all the time, I cannot sleep at night, I can't even hug my husband, I'm gonna commit suicide. And I looked at her and I said, you know, four years ago, we looked at your genetic markers and I remember they told me that both of your parents had given you sets of genes that left you without the enzymes that are required to eliminate poisons from damp indoor environments, and particularly those associated with molds from your body. And you and your husband have spent many, many years living in substandard housing. And I tried to get you to do charcoal, clay, or cholestyramine to try to help pull out of your system the toxins that I thought were acting as inflammagens and triggering the rash on your body. And I remember you lasted four days and stopped. And she said, yeah, that, that's true. And I said, well, you know, I still believe that those inflammagens are the cause. Okay, 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 I'll do clay. Two teaspoons of clay and a quart of her favorite iced tea, 90 minutes after her morning medications and 90 minutes after her evening medications. And she started to do this and she did not miss a dose and she returned to the clinic three weeks later and her skin was totally clear for the first time in 42 years. At that visit, I looked at her and I said, gee, I didn't realize you wore a wig. Why are you wearing a wig? And she took her wig off and she had very sparse hair, almost none at the top of her head. And I said, okay. And she continued you know, to come in monthly and we surveyed her skin and she continued to do her clay. She had no lesions anywhere. And in three months, her hair was growing back in rather profusely and thickly. And by Christmas time, six months later, she had a full head of hair. It was not a wig, she had a full head of hair. At that visit at Christmas time, she said to me, Doc, you know, I was taking clay for three years. And I said, well, why are we doing that? Because remember you told me, so I said, well, now you have me totally confused. What's the difference between what you were doing then and what you're doing now? Because then it didn't do anything. Then I only took it once a day. Now she was taking it twice a day. What that told me was that when she did the clay once a day, she would lower down the level of the toxins in her fluids. But within 24 hours, they were certainly coming back up because they were coming out of the cells of her body. That was the storage site for her toxins. Now that she was doing it twice a day, she kept the level so low that the immune system, as sensitive as it is, could not detect the presence of the toxins. And the inflammatory processes that were manifesting as these rashes disappeared. So what was all this telling us? Number one, it was true that the toxins in the fluid compartment of her body were laden with poisons that were acting as stimulants to the immune system and it was manifesting itself as these rashes. They were basically inflammagens. And the storage sites, of course, were in the cells. The immune system lives in the fluid space. It does not live in the cells. 
It migrates all over our body, and it basically, the, the armies of cells audit what's going on and do whatever they need to do, but they're always doing that in the fluid space. So once she cleared this fluid space, the inflammation could stop. At 14 months, she stopped her clay. Within a week, she had all the lesions back on her skin again. She started back on the clay, and within a couple weeks, it all dissipated and they went away. At two and a half years, she switched from clay to charcoal, and nothing happened. It stayed clear, and she was fine. Every once in a while, after she started the charcoal, she would stop her charcoal, and the lesions would come back. I saw her in May of 2017, and she came into the office and she said, Doc, I have not taken charcoal for three months, and I have no lesions. She had emptied out the storage sites in her cells. It took six and a half years. The other thing that I learned from her was that because it was particularly the molds that were a problem, and they make poisons that are known to interfere with protein synthesis, it was because of that that she couldn't make her hair until she cleared them out of her body, at least the fluids. And then her hair grew fine. And so too did her fingernails, which were all distorted. This is what I refer to as an N of one case history. She has taught us so much because when you have a linear relationship with a patient over a long period of time, in this case, 20 years, I was able to see changes and correlate them to the things that she was doing therapeutically. She taught all of us a great deal. And I believe it gives hope to my patients because now they understand, A, that it, this whole approach works, and B, that there's an end point. It took her six and a half years, but she cleared the poisons from her system.